Welcome to the Word Examined Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Wagner, intern pastor and true crime enthusiast. This season, we continue to dive into the ultimate true crime story, the life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. This is a story you may have heard before, but I hope that with this telling, you can place yourself in the story and consider what it would have been like to shout Hosanna at the triumphal entry, share a meal at the Last Supper, or bear witness to one of the most brutal forms of murder in our history. I'm glad you're on this journey with me. Last week on the Word Examined podcast, we found ourselves at Jesus' trial, where Jesus was found innocent by Pontius Pilate, governor of Judea, but accused and condemned by the crowd, a crowd growing in anger and hatred by the minute. Pilate could not control the crowd, so he washed his hands of Jesus' blood and handed him over to the crowds to do with what they wanted. And what they wanted was death. What they wanted was to see Jesus suffer and die. The disciples and followers of Jesus could only stand by and watch, for fear of being arrested and condemned themselves. They watched as Jesus walked toward his death. They watched as Jesus was face to face with his instrument of torture and death, a large wooden cross. And now, it is our turn to bear witness to one of the most brutal murders in our history. Let's get started. An important note about this week's episode. This episode contains graphic descriptions of violence that some listeners may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. The soldiers, chief priests, scribes, and other officials continued to mock Jesus even after he had been handed over to them. Pilate had not prevailed in seeking a lesser punishment for Jesus, whom he claimed was innocent. But they did not care about Pilate's opinion, and their voices of anger and hatred had prevailed. They had gotten what they wanted, and this was Jesus, to do with what they pleased. Jesus stared down the cross in front of him, and knew what was next. His death would be soon. His last breath would be soon. But again, he was doing this for all of God's people, even the ones who wanted him dead. This was for them, but this would be an agonizing death. Jesus was led away by the officials to be crucified. They forced him to carry his cross. They watched him struggle as he tried to hold the beam of the cross on his shoulders, the wood splintering and digging into his body, blood starting to trickle down his back. The crown of thorns still laid upon his head. The blood from that had dried and crusted in his hair and on his face. They pushed him down to the ground, so he was forced to pick up the cross again. They pushed him down and watched him struggle to breathe, struggle to get back up. Jesus walked slowly, too slow for some of them. So they grabbed a passerby from the crowd, a man named Simon of Cyrene, to carry the cross for Jesus. At this point, they began to flog Jesus as the crowd watched. Wails from Jesus' followers could be heard from the crowd. They continued to mock Jesus, to berate him for not being able to carry his cross. They whipped him relentlessly, what was known as scourging, and what was a common form of punishment in that time. Jesus was scourged by Roman guards. This process typically involved a whip with narrow strips of leather on one end, about 18 to 24 inches long. But that was not the most gruesome part of the whip. This whip had bits of either metal, bone, or glass attached to those narrow strips that would inflict the most bloody of torture for those on the receiving end. Scourging was an extreme form of punishment, but this would not be the cause of Jesus' death. No, their torture of him was only the beginning. In fact, scourging was often so violent that it caused extreme blood loss and dehydration, which was often the cause of death for many victims. Their skin would be shredded, their bodies broken and bloodied. But the scourging was not enough for the crowd and for those who hated Jesus. They whipped him with reeds as well. 
anything to cause suffering and pain. Jesus cried out with shouts of agony as the torture continued. He was severely dehydrated, as he had not had anything to drink since the night before. So the combination of the beatings and scourging caused immense pain that should have killed him. But Jesus was no ordinary man, and this was no ordinary situation. His suffering would continue. If the prophecies would be fulfilled from Scripture, then Jesus would suffer and die for the salvation of all God's people. Jesus bore the weight of human sin, greed, and power, and it was a weight that would continue to cause him great pain and suffering until his death. They continued to beat Jesus as he reached the place called Golgotha, also known as the Skull, the place where he would be crucified. Simon of Cyrene had carried his cross to this place and handed it over to the officials to place it on top of the hill between two other crosses for the criminals who would be crucified with Jesus that day. They offered Jesus sour wine mixed with myrrh to drink, but he refused. This mixture was often offered to criminals as a form of anesthetic, but yet Jesus refused it. Jesus was led up the hill to be crucified. He was led up the hill to his death. Crucifixion in Jesus' time was a common form of punishment for criminals. Historically, it was invented by the Persians between 300 and 400 BC, but enhanced and perfected by the Romans in the first century. Arguably, crucifixion is one of the most brutal forms of murder, meant to inflict maximum pain and suffering to those sentenced to this way of death. It was reserved for the most vile of criminals. But here, an innocent man would take the brunt of its torture for us. Join us to celebrate Christ's resurrection at Trinity Lutheran Church of Boyceville for our Easter worship services on April 17th. Our sunrise worship is at 6.30 a.m. and we have a celebration worship at 9 a.m. Easter breakfast is served at 7.30 a.m. between the services by our confirmation youth. If you can't join us in person, watch us live on Facebook or check out the services later on our YouTube channel. Happy Easter to you as you worship our risen Savior. Jesus was face to face with the cross once again. He was stripped of his clothes and his clothes were divided between the Roman guards as they continued to mock him and deride him. Jesus was laid on his back, arms stretched out on either side as the guards came forward. Jesus saw the nails in their hands, the mallets that would be used to pierce his flesh with cold and rusted metal. The nails were usually seven to nine inches long, long enough to pierce the flesh between the bones of the victim's forearm and the small bones in the hand. Jesus cried out in pain as each nail was pounded into his flesh. First, his right wrist, then his right hand, then his left wrist and left hand. Slowly, each nail was forced into Jesus' flesh, forced with the hatred of those who had condemned him to death, those who had been wanting this, all along. The nails used in the crucifixion process had varied purposes, one being to impose great pain and suffering, but they also severed nerves in the hands causing a great burning pain and causing permanent paralysis. The nails in Jesus' wrists would have caused minimal bleeding, but would ensure that he would hang there until he was dead. They had perfected the process to ensure that their victims would suffer and the end result would be death. Jesus' feet were next to be nailed to the cross, and for the Roman guards this was the most crucial part of a successful crucifixion. As Jesus laid there, nails through his wrists and hands, his knees were slightly bent and feet were made parallel with the vertical part of the cross. Another nail would be forced through both of Jesus' feet, severing the arteries in the feet, again causing minimal bleeding, but ensuring he would stay on the cross until he was pronounced dead. With nails in place, Jesus was lifted high into the air for all to see. 
He looked out at the crowd, filled with people who were crying out with hatred and vitriol. But it was also filled with those who were mourning his coming death, mourning the loss of their teacher, their friend, their savior. As Jesus hung on the cross, the slow and painful process of dying began. Technically speaking, the cause of death for those who die by crucifixion is not from nails or loss of blood. Jesus would die by suffocation. Because his knees were bent in such a way, there was almost no way to support the weight of his body. And as his legs gave out beneath him, Jesus had to bear his weight solely by his arms and hands, which were hanging by mere flesh on the cross. Within a few minutes, his shoulders would dislocate, along with his elbows and wrists. Jesus hung on the cross in great agony. As he hung there, people continued to deride him, including the criminal to his side. The criminal cried out, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the criminal on his other side rebuked this man and said, We deserve to be punished for what we have done, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, through labored breathing and pain, rippling through every inch of his body, turned to this criminal and said, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It had been hours since Jesus was nailed to the cross. He had lost track of just how long, but witnesses claim it was around three in the afternoon as Jesus' death drew near. You see, with the method of crucifixion, there was great pain and suffering due to the nails and dislocated limbs. But as Jesus' legs, arms, hands gave out, it caused all pressure and force to focus on his chest. Jesus was suffocating. To take a breath, Jesus had to use all his strength to push down on his feet to allow any muscles in his chest to relax and allow him to breathe. He could no longer take a deep breath. He was tired. Fatigue plagued every part of his body. He was taking in less and less breath with each attempt. And each time he tried to breathe, his limbs became more and more dislocated. As more time passed, Jesus knew his time was drawing near. His last breath would truly be soon. With the energy he had left, Jesus looked upward and cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Translated from Hebrew into English, this means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? People nearby said to one another, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. One of the people ran at once to grab a sponge full of vinegar, placed it on a reed and gave it to Jesus to drink. But others said, Wait. Let us see if Elijah will come and save him. Let us see if Elijah will take him down. Jesus cried out louder in agony. It is finished and breathed his last breath. The slow process of death was complete. Jesus had died at the hands of those who hated him. Shouts of victory in the crowd were mixed with painful cries of sorrow and sadness from those who loved Jesus. The Savior of the world, the Son of God, was dead. It was at that moment that the earth shook and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. It was at this moment that the centurion spoke, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Notably, a centurion was considered an outsider. This was a Roman soldier who praised the God who was revealed in the crucified Christ. In the midst of pain and suffering, God's promises were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And once again, it was an outsider who saw Jesus' true nature and acknowledged him as the Son of God. Jesus' followers, including some women, bore witness to Jesus' death. 
since it was the day of preparation and in order to prevent bodies from remaining on the cross on the sabbath the jews asked pilate if their legs might be broken if they were still alive so as to quicken their death they broke the legs of the criminal on jesus side who was still alive but they saw that jesus was already dead one of the soldiers pierced jesus side with a spear and outrushed blood and water after this a man named joseph of arimathea who was a disciple of jesus but secretly for fear of jewish authorities came to pilate and asked him if he might take away the body of jesus for a proper burial pilate granted this man's request joseph and other followers of jesus came to take jesus body to the tomb where he would be buried they came prepared with spice mixtures and clean linens as was customary for burial now do you remember during the triumphal entry when jesus had ridden on a colt that had never been ridden before well you guessed it jesus was laid in a tomb that had never been used before what do you think are the odds of finding a tomb that had never been used when this was the custom at the time for the dead again it is a symbol of jesus being unlike any king or person that had come before jesus was different jesus was truly the son of god the messiah sent to take away the burden of sin and death and make all things new the light of the world grew dimmer as they finished their ritual and prepared to say goodbye to jesus forever the massive stone was rolled in front of jesus tomb and they walked away with great sadness in their hearts it was unbearable but friends have no fear the story isn't over Next time on the Word Examine podcast, we hear the end of the story. Or is it? We pick up in our last episode with what happens on the third day after Jesus had died, and bear witness to what the women find when they come to the tomb on that morning. And what they find is shocking. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. This podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Katie Wagner. The Word Examined Podcast. Available on Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.